I've never been so turned on by a, a middle-aged <laughs> Japanese man. <laughs> Sorry, are we going? Are we recording? Let's do it. I'm oh, ready. Oh man, that's the most terrible start <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Said by uninteresting people. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Things Said by Uninteresting People, where we talk about interesting things so that you don't have to. My name's Ben, and as always, I'm joined by the far more simian half of the podcast, Tom. How are you, Hello. mate? Yeah, I'm good. Don't know what simian means, but I'm good. Uh, ape-like, monkey-like. Oh, great. <laughs> it's not entirely true. It's more of a reference, I guess. I that's why it's in my mind. <laughs> Love it. Right, yeah. You could have come on swinging uh-huh. through the trees, you know? <laughs> I, see, that's all I'm picturing now, is at the start of the podcast, we've got the mic at one end of the jungle. Yeah. If we ever have an animated version, it's going to be you going, whoo, 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 whoo. <laughs> time to podcast. Great. Great. They just have to draw a, a bold man and they've done it. Yeah, that, yeah. It's that, so is... easy. <laughs> Almost too easy. Dude, speaking to that man, I mean, I know we are both <laughs> of the of the Sean, let's call it, let's call it shaved head shaved variety. appearance yeah uh this last weekend has been far too nice weather for having no thick mop of hair to protect your skin from the sun yeah man i i, I wear a hat a lot anyway like not probably 90 percent of the time but yes no I've i been, think uh, i need to i need to get on mowing, that train man i need I've to up mowing, my uh <laughs> yeah man. i've been mowing the lawn like a real 30 year old and uh i didn't wear my hat and i came in i was like oh wonder if that's uh, done me in for the old bold. <laughs> wonder if that's got the, the sun-kissed boldness. Oh, man. Well, like I, I think I said to I think I think said to my dad when it was happening, I was like, oh, you know, nothing's more, you know, a shaven head is, is fairly attractive. A, a peeling shaven head, oh, e- yeah. even better. So let's really go for it. Let's really <laughs> dive in. off the ladies of that look. Like, oh, I'm married. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> pack it in, pack it in. <laughs> but yeah, oh. otherwise I'm good. But how are you? <laughs> Uh, mate, I'm fine, dude. I'm fine, man. Um, you know, we've been we've been busy with all sorts of different things, uh, and I'm back into I'm back into doing the house mode now. We've got our over enthusiastic electrician has just finished all of his jobs and the extra jobs that we didn't ask him to do, which is great. Excellent. Uh, yeah, man. You know, it's the last little bit, so we're going to get painting. Uh, I've got a wall I need to build. Yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff. And and I weed killed my lawn. Speaking of got thirty year old garden jobs. Yeah, God, that yeah. is. That really is there. I'm isn't it? feeling like a pro. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Keep that um, little nice and green. Did you say you were back out shooting again with, uh, yeah, with your work? Which is nice. Yeah. So with uh, freelance work, I'm back out shooting photos and video again, which is really nice because it's been such a long time. Well, it's basically been like I the best part of a year. I mean, we did a we did a few when lockdown eased back in like September or whatever, but then it obviously locked right back up. But yeah, now it's now it's easing which it is slightly in the uk not not massively but there is a, a bit of an ease yeah so you managed to get out and and do some out the, well we've done some photography indoors where nobody is and worn sure. masks and all that all that garbage but you know it's good it, it's really nice to just do that sort of stuff again because that's what i'm there for yeah i mean did you so feel nice. uh i don't know i don't know nervous is probably the wrong word but you know when you've had a break from doing something that yeah. Not to put too fine a point on it, you're getting paid to do, you know. Yeah, <laughs> sort of, but also not because because I do it so much for myself. I'm never like I'm never a day without taking a photo of something. So it wasn't uh, it wasn't too bad to be honest. Yeah, except you have to dress Man, like, smart. I, you, you might have seen this on my Instagram, but I really lucked out. I, I feel like I've been like using Pocky for content too much recently. Sure, prob- yeah. But the problem is he does he does always come in, and when he he lied on my desk flat. Like a real flat lie. Oh, and I excellent! Put all the put all the uh, items around him and made a proper flat lay picture of the cat, which I was like <laughs> stupidly proud of. Because <laughs> I was being so quiet when I was doing it. I was like, right, just put that book there. Just put yeah, the camera yeah, yeah. There. And, shh, 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 shh. and then turn the camera on silent mode. I was really careful. Oh man! And I got the shot, and he actually stayed there for ages anyway. I was like, you need to move now because I need to get back on work. <laughs> 
you've got to yeah. be consistent with your cat parenting, mate. It's like, yes, yeah. now this is allowed. No, now it's not allowed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Terrible. He's such a show cat. It's like, perform, perform. Yeah. Get, now get back in your box. <laughs> yeah. You know what? When, when so, people chart the success of the Bite Review channel, when it's like the year 2030, and people go, oh, yeah. where did Bite Review really start? They're going to mark the pocky pivot, where oh, all no. of a sudden it just becomes pure pocky content. Uh, terrible isn't it clickbait cat content pocky does what and my face like that <laughs> <laughs> on the thumbnails you know what even though it's not a visual medium if you've yeah. been on youtube even once you know exactly the you face that tom mean. was just pulling <laughs> yeah pocky broke my iphone <gasps> what did i do next <laughs> yeah <laughs> dreadful but no um, he, those kind of, those cut right i'm sorry man that is the worst kind of clickbait where it's like half a sentence oh, it's like dreadful. pocky disappeared from yeah. the video for two minutes you yeah, know it? It's, it is so <laughs> dreadful and unfortunately if you if you're like a parent and you click on youtube trending that is the sort of garbage you see and then you think yeah why on earth do my kids watch this crap <laughs> <laughs> so it is uh, disappointing Oh man, it's terrible, isn't it? What they should do is they should. I've just, this is off the top of the old dome, so bear with. Uh, I think they should have. They shouldn't just have kids YouTube. They should have like secret educational YouTube. Yeah, where it's like it looks just like the adult one, so the kids think, "Oh yeah, this is cool." You know, I'm not. On, I'm too old for kids YouTube, and I'm, I am talking about little kids though, like you know, five, six years old, where they just yeah. start to pick up the iPad. But it's secretly educational. And you can't get away from it. Like, it's all, you know, there is no uh-huh, just... you learned. Yeah, even like the Minecraft videos. It's like, oh, man, we're going to put on some lead armor today. And lead is one of the heaviest metals available. <laughs> Love it. Oh, man. Dude, we've got, we've got a handful of things to talk about. So it might, we've, we said it might be end up being a slightly shorter episode. So people yeah, will be uh, breathing a sigh You're of relief. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you, you never know. We can probably pad this out to be a full hour. Yeah. With with relative ease. <laughs> oh, definitely. Sorry, Randy. Sorry, mate. But there we go. Um, but, uh, dude, the first thing that I know you wanted to mention, is, it was vaguely photography related. Uh, yeah. And it's probably the it's most confusing related. thing. I, I've never felt so confused. <laughs> All right. There's, um, I, I basically found about this because someone posted it in a group chat I was in. And I was like, what on earth? But basically, there's a, a Twitter account of like this uh, Japanese motorcycle girl that had just been like, you know, classic sort of influencer sort of pictures, me on the bike, you know, me in front of the, you know, big engines and all that sort of stuff. And like, you know, you can, you can tell the photos are a bit doctored in terms of like, you know, she's brushed up her makeup or like smoothed out the face and that like sort a of thing, which is pretty, yeah. yeah, which is pretty normal. You know, you wouldn't, uh, that that's pretty average for a lot of people, like touch up the appearance, you know, right. make God, the nose God smaller. forbid, God forbid yeah. you ever post a photo of how you actually look online. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Christ, can you imagine? Um, but yeah, basically some, and it's like, it's a whole story. We'll, I guess we'll post it in the, the show notes if we can, but um, yeah, yeah. basically someone found out that it's, um, it's a, a bloke, basically a fifty-year-old Japanese guy that had been using a, an app, <laughs> an app called FaceApp. I don't know if you've used it, but it was all the rage a couple of years ago. When you I could have, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could like flip, you could like remove your beard or like make your eyes bigger, or and the you know the main one that people like thought was like mental was like you could change your gender on it, so you sure. could see like it would put on hair and makeup if you're a, if you're a bloke and like make you look more like a female, and. Um, he had been doing that but the way they found out that he'd been doing that was incredible because he you know amassed a, quite a big following it's like 25k followers sure, on Twitter. Sure. but someone noticed that he'd taken a picture in front of his bike and in the wing mirror you could see his actual face <laughs> of, of this like 50 year old <laughs> of this like well yeah you know middle-aged guy that likes bikes the thing is but though man, if, that's, it's like something out of a fucking horror movie you know yeah, you, you're like you look at this picture and then all of a sudden there's this wizened old japanese yeah. bloke in the mirror going look at you <laughs> but it's funny because like the the photos of the girl or the photos that he'd been like doctoring because he had been used turns out he'd been using that face app and a bit of photoshop and you know just to make it look really real they do look incredibly good like they're really good fakes they're really yeah, you, know, sure. you wouldn't if you saw the picture you just scroll past it you wouldn't think anything of it even under like heavy scrutiny you, you could you know if you knew what you're looking for you could probably tell yeah but, sure um, yeah for, for the average joe you can't tell at all and i mean the thing is though as well like like we said especially when it, basically every photo that you see even from your average person on the street 
every yeah. photo is touched up. Yeah, yeah. You know, massively. most, most, photos, you know, especially if it's someone who is paying attention to their Twitter feed, if that makes sense. It's not yeah. your idol, oh, I'm down the shops today. You know, if they're a, you know, at whatever level, if they're trying to make a good feed, then yeah. those photos are definitely touched up. That's it. And another thing that's interesting, because the, I think the article has a bit of an interview of him. He said he's been trying to amass a following for quite a long time just because he loves bikes and stuff, but never really managed to do it. But he said the second he did that face filter and posted it, he's like, I got way more likes and retweets than like I'd ever no had way. before. So he just said he just started running with it, you know, and just doing every photo like that and amassed this huge following, which is like really interesting to show those two aspects of it. Like, yeah, you know, how much I mean, having a pretty face or whatever can, can help out in that respect. Isn't it funny, man? Because it's almost there's almost a parallel here with when uh, women used to have to post as men. Essentially, I say post. Christ, what have I become? They used to write <laughs> books. They used to write books yeah, under yeah. pen names, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it would be uh, they had to be a man, or it had to be their husband's name on a scientific paper. And I know, I know, right? Yeah. I, I get that that whole history of of uh discrimination is a lot more serious than some japanese guy posting as, yeah, a, yeah. as a woman instead but just the idea that you have to be something different to succeed in a particular field yeah it's weird that that's still around in some form i don't know yeah. prob- probably is in lots of ways but but Definitely. just a, an unusual the, branch of it the funny thing about it although is like he he didn't try and deny it you know they they found him out he's like yeah yeah that's that's what i've been doing but <laughs> yes. then he i think from the problem is I've been using Google Translate to translate his tweet because it links to his Twitter where he says, like, oh, I'm actually this guy. And you have to use Google Translate. And obviously it's a bit broken in terms of, like, it's English translation. So sure. he basically just says, like, yeah, this is this is the real me, but I am going to keep posting as this uh, girl version. If you don't want to follow, that's fine. If you do, okay. then I'm going to. He, yeah, so fair he enough. Kind of, yeah, he's kind of, like, <laughs> open about it. He's like, I'm not trying to convince anybody that's who I am. But you know I am what? going to keep posting like that. That does make the most... Actually, mate, that's really smart. That makes absolute sense. Because, you know, the the idea of a feed like that is to grow, right? I mean, you yeah. you, you grow your followers and you grow your interaction. If the only way... If you if it's working to grow followers, you there will always be people who don't know that that's, exactly. that that's the idea. And they will never know. You know, we'll never no. find that out. My, my, like... The funny thing I would imagine thinking about it is like, imagine if a brand gets in touch, like, oh, we want to sponsor a post or whatever. <laughs> and and he, go, he goes to whatever event this is. And they're like, oh, where's, where's, I think, because I think the name on the profile is also a girl's name, I think. Okay. So they're like, oh, where's this person? And you'd be like, no, no, look. It's that's me. me. It's like, fuck <laughs> off, catfish. Where is she? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's just a funny little thing. It just goes to show how, uh, because the face app filter thing is really quick. Yeah, you know, it does it. Yeah. It does it in like I don't know, ten seconds. Yeah, but it goes sure. to show how how you know easy it is to to dupe someone on a line. I guess, but it's just a little interesting tidbit. I thought. Did you? No, man, it is. Did you ever get into face app when it was? Uh, I tr- when it was all the rage, I tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because for one, it's incredible that the way. Yeah. It, I mean, it's incredible that it's AI generated as well. Yeah. You know, where it, where it is literally a computer saying, okay, well, if this is what you look like now, then I've seen enough photos of old people to think that you'll look like yeah. this when you're older. That but, was I mean, it, wasn't it? was the, old, the aging thing. That was the yeah. uh, most crazy one everyone's well, going for, yeah. I know, I know everyone had this experience, but as soon as I put myself through it, I ended up looking just like my dad. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's weird that there might be something in it, you know, like not, not predicting mm. the future, but if, you know, if, if we'd, we are just following a pattern... Yeah. You know, however much we want to think we're individuals, we're just following a pattern that computer can recognise and go, oh, you're, you're pretty much going to look like this when you're older. I guess there's so much information for it to capture, though, because there's so many pictures of people like, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yeah. throughout the years. Like, it's probably got so many photos to digest. And actually, mate, I mean, the I think I saw someone running uh, old high school yearbook photos through it of oh, really? celebrities. And, mate... It's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty accurate. Good, yeah. yeah, man. That's you know, they, they come out looking exactly how they, they ended up looking like. That's really good. But That's did funny. I? This, this is completely unfounded. This is just a rumour. But didn't I hear that it was like a Russian app? Like it, people had yeah. some concerns about it being a bit sketchy as well? That's it. Because it, I think it uploads your <laughs> photo to process it in the cloud and beams it yeah. back down to you. And, and wherever it's doing that is in Russia. And America is a little bit like, oh, no. I don't, you see, I don't know what nefarious russians would ever want to do with my face 
but it's still a bit weird, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I try my best not to think about that sort of stuff because, like, I, where, where do you stop? Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. But, no, yeah, true. I know what you mean. I, I do remember that being a big thing. It's like, oh, it's a Russian app. Don't use it. Don't put it on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't put it in still real name in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, those were the days. Those were the days when life was just a bit simpler. We were still worrying about the Russians controlling our software. Yeah, let's go back to that. It was better than the virus. I'll take that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's what it was really. But it was a funny little thing. I thought. How many? And, and almost mean, fair play to him in a way. You know, yeah, man. In, in a way, sort of. Is it weird? I don't know. I mean, it worked. <laughs> it seems pretty innocent. I mean, yeah, who knows, mate? Who knows? I think one thing you can be sure of is you're going to get plenty of copycat accounts that are very weird, that oh, are not yeah, okay. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, man. Um, dude, moving on. I wanted to, uh, I just literally just wanted to tell you, because I haven't spoken to you about this, yeah. but I wanted to tell you about this. Uh, it was something that we got gifted, uh, Claire and I got as a present from my dad because I think his wife had been given it uh, as a present by her daughter. So it's like a big chain of, of gift giving. And it right. is very worth recommending. So if anyone's half listening to this podcast, kind of on and off, you know, like in the background, pay, hey, listen, pay, stop, <laughs> pay attention. All right, pay attention. Um, it, we had a breakfast kit from a restaurant called Dishoom. Right. It's D-I-S-H-O-O-M, uh, which is an Indian restaurant. It's actually a small chain of Indian restaurants in London. So it's right. kind of, it's not like a national chain, but it's, you know, they're, they're successful enough that they've got a few different locations. Uh, sure. And it's it's a breakfast kit for essentially a bacon sandwich. Right. So they send you through everything you need, right, uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in a box and, and you know when it's coming. I think, I think you can book the specific day you want it delivered so you can make sure you can, you can put it in the fridge, you know. Incidentally, comes with very cool biodegradable sheep's wool insulation you know to keep it cool cool uh cold. yeah yeah so yeah there's that but so you get you basically get everything you need to make this kind of nan bread uh bacon wrap essentially right. i think i saw a picture of this on your twitter uh mate i definitely posted a picture of this yeah. I, and I, I defy anybody not to post it once they've made it, it because <laughs> so so if i t- okay so if i tell you i mean you i, I guess i haven't actually looked at it but i guess they must do different ones but basically what we what we made was uh it's like a thin nan bread with some spicy tomato chutney like a like a, a pay, like a sauce sauce yeah uh with some uh soft cheese like some cream cheese to go in there as well a bit of coriander obviously i know that's a bit decis- um divisive but yeah i like coriander some bacon to go in it and then they give you uh some uh, like a kit to make yourself some chai tea as well nice. so you're uh yeah, so you're basically making yourself this whole amazing Indian style breakfast, uh, and it was delicious. I, I cannot stress this enough, man. It was so good, um, and it was like because you you know you you cook the nans up properly, so you you sort of put them in the frying pan to start with, dry, and they kind of start to bubble up. Put them onto the yeah. grill, they start to puff up nicely. Ooh, Dude, that sounds delicious. I I read the uh, description. And you kind of look at the instructions and think, ah, this might be a little bit too complicated for me. Right. You like it because it, it, it I, I for almost a bacon wish... sandwich. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, basically just, just two slices of bread bake. Um, yeah. But I almost wish they, if I had any criticism on something, I got no right to criticize. I, I feel like the instructions could be more reassuring. They could sure. go, don't worry, you are not going to mess this up. You know, it's, yeah. it, you, it, it talks in terms of like, this might take 30 seconds and quickly do this, then quickly do that. You've got, it's dead easy. You've got loads of time. And the end result is gram worthy. Put it that way. Uh, yeah, dude. Oh, and nice. I just wanted to tell you about it because it's, I'm, I, I, you know, when you use something that's so good that you just, you feel a bit compelled to spread the word. Yeah. It was absolutely delicious. I, I haven't looked. I'm sure they do different kits though. I, I don't think this would be the only, the only kit that they would do. Uh, but yeah, man, that it comes with enough for for two of you, you know. Nice. Uh, I know no one that we like listens to this podcast, so we can still reserve this as like, uh, <laughs> you know, as like a present that we could give to people one day in the future. Sure. But, oh, but yeah. yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it's from so from Dishoom. Uh, I'll, I will post the link in the. In fact, let's make a little note so I don't forget. Uh, I'll post the link in the show notes. Excellent. Uh, so was it? Can, do you say it was? Is it breakfast only? Uh, I, again i don't know i don't know i bet they i bet you they would do other stuff that you could cook as well that's sure, my, yeah. my feeling but this this breakfast one man is oh 
it's so good and and worth it doesn't take a lot of time really uh maybe it takes about 20 minutes to prepare 20 minutes about half an hour Fair a real enough. push a real push right. I'm pretty used to that sort of thing because we, we've been using HelloFresh for so long now. I'm so used to, like, when dinner comes around, it's like an hour to make the fucking thing. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then Dude, it's uh, finally eat. Not to, so get, like, to it. not to get sidetracked here, but I, what, what is your experience of HelloFresh? And this isn't sponsored. <laughs> in, no, case, no. <laughs> in case I need to make that super clear. We're not sponsored it's, um, by HelloFresh. I'll answer in the quickest way possible then. It's... It's really good if you can get it on a deal. If you can't get it on like a... Because they, they do deals all the time, like 40% off, like that. If you have to pay full price, I don't think it's worth it. It's it's really? the ingredients. Because we, we did it a few times where we just bought the ingredients. We kept the, the recipe things you get with it and bought the ingredients at Tesco. And it's, you know, quite a lot cheaper unless sure. you get it on one of those deals. Then it yeah, works yeah. out to be like maybe a couple of quid more, but it's worth having it all from them. Okay. Um, it's really good for trying loads of new things and they're always really nice. I've probably had one dish which I didn't like. Okay. But it's a lot of time to, to honestly they, they usually say on them like, Oh, it takes twenty five minutes to make because you've never made it before, it takes forty minutes. Yeah. And then yeah. and then yeah, you know, it's like, Have you got this, have you got that? If you haven't got the specific like- spice, it's like, Oh, what am I gonna do? They usually bundle them in, but yeah. That's my review. It's great. Fair enough. On a oh, deal. that's a shame. It's, it's, yeah, because that's, I'll be honest, that fits with how I've kind of felt about it from the outside. Because I know I'm, my, mm-hmm. my uh, dad uses them. I know, I think my mum used them as well, actually. Um, yeah. And they've, they've been really happy. But I think it, it does, it's always sounded like more it's come from them being introduced to new meals. Like, exactly yeah, like that's you say. The yeah, best it's, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was almost like a bit more of a handhold through the first time you're going to yeah. make something. I mean, the thing is, it's really good if you're really indecisive about what you want for dinner. Like okay. me and Kelly will go through phases of having things and, you know, then meals never really change. And the reason we got it actually is because we're just so sick of what we're having over and over and over, but without knowing what else to go for. It's like yeah, almost sure. like you ran out of meals because you have those go-to meals you always have. But yeah. we're just so sick of them. It's like, what are we going to do? And then we tried out HelloFresh. Dude, I mean, yeah, no, what, not I, I noticed hashtag. on some of their, um, I noticed on some of their advertising at the moment, they're kind of they're leading with the line of, oh yes, I thought it was expensive too, but not really when you break, yeah. So they're, they're obviously that's obviously a criticism that gets levelled at mm. them a lot. Yeah, for them to every time we leave, address it, because we you have to like sign up and sign off every time we leave. We say it's too expensive. That's why we're leaving. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it is. I, I mean, it's silly because, you know, they obviously have to box it up and send it to you and you're paying for that too. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is, you know, it is too expensive. And some meals See, aren't included unless you pay more. Yeah. It, it's too expensive. Oh, that's a shame, man. Because you think, I mean, I'm not, again, I don't, you know, I'm sure their marketing department knows a lot more than I do about this. Um, yeah. But you'd think they could push it more as like a treat thing. Yeah, like like as a no, but I, I guess they have to push subscriptions. I guess they ha- you know they they obviously want people to have repeat business. But yeah, if they definitely. sold it as a kind of you know not not to be stereotypical for a minute, but you know you've got a, a bloke who's maybe his partner, you know, he's he's got a wife who it's her birthday and he doesn't really cook, you know, like like you know men of a yeah, certain yeah, generation well, yeah. especially, you could say, hey, well, we've got you, all right, get this, mm-hmm. you'll get exactly the ingredients you need. We'll walk you through how to make it, and it's going to be Super amazing. Simple. Yeah. And well, maybe well, even it, charge a little bit more for it, you know, and just yeah. just make it make it really premium and go. But this is for a special night, you know. It almost needs a backup uh, for it though, because the amount of times I've messed up a sauce or something, <laughs> it's like look, there's there's two goes at that sauce because you, there's a good yeah. chance you'll fuck it up. <laughs> Here are some phone numbers you can call for the yeah. do home delivery. <laughs> but yeah, man, that it, yeah, I've said what I need to say about it. It's it's cool if you can get it on a deal. Oh, fair enough. Oh, well, man, dude. Okay, well, well, hey, hello, Fresh. If you ever want to sponsor us, we'll have some slightly more positive things to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will absolutely love it then. God, it's so cheap. Yeah. I mean, dude, talking of, uh, this is this is a complete left turn because I, I know we have this low down on the list, but and I'm, I'm going to try and keep this short. But just it's it. something that I've kind of wanted to half recommend for a long while. Um, but we got a cookbook uh, from Deliciously Ella. Right. Uh, and this this might be good for you. So I, I, I you know I, I genuinely recommend this to people uh, quite a lot. Uh, so I think I don't know what her surname is, but Deliciously Ella is is her brand. I think she's the heir to the Sainsbury's 
fortune thrown. i think <laughs> the, the, the same as we've thrown yeah um but Mad. she makes she makes a lot of food i don't know if all of it is uh vegan slash vegetarian right. um but i know this this book that we got was and you know what i'm going to try and see if i can find it really quick uh look at this look, uh, deliciously ella book <laughs> she's done like, so many books because um, i want to find out exactly which book it is it is quick and easy uh Quick and easy. That's what it's called. It's called quick and easy. Plant based deliciousness. Um, I don't know if the rest of her books are, uh, like I say, vegan or vegetarian, but these ones are. Not that we're vegan necessarily, um, no. but we but we do eat plant based. Like we don't eat so much meat. You know, we we'll eat meat once in a while or what have you. Sure. Dude, honestly, the the recipes in this book I cannot recommend enough. And this, no so this way. is this is literally just a. I read this. We use it all the time sort of a ben's rec but in a slightly yeah. more mid 30s like if you're cooking <laughs> if you're cooking a meal kind of recommendation it's not like a, a cool action movie or what have you uh but yeah it, the stuff that's in there is really easy to make um it's super super delicious there's like a, there's a mushroom stroganoff in there that's really good there's a, there's a tomato risotto which everyone i've made it for or recommended it to has been super into it yeah nice. if, if anyone out there is feeling like i don't know i guess if you're feeling like your your dinner times are a bit stale you know, if you feel like you're making the same thing. And this, I'm just trying to come up with an advert on the fly here. But if, yeah, if you feel like, you know, you're just looking for a bit of inspiration of things to make for tea. Yeah. Delicious yellow, quick and easy. Genuinely really good. Oh, there's there's like brownies and cookies and stuff in there as well. Like it's... it's oh, man. Yeah. Mate, yeah, cookies really are good. my like downfall. If, um, if I were to ever get clinically obese, it would be thanks to <laughs> cookies. Cookies and cheesecake. Oh, that would be the... Man. That would be it. I'd probably oh. be happy. Just very big and very happy. Can I just just to really descend this podcast into stuff that no one else is going to care about? Can I ask how yeah. you feel about oatmeal cookies, like oat and raisin? Cookies? No, not for me. I don't, really? I don't eat a cookie to be healthy, mate. I want a oh, chocolate man. chip. Yes, your classic or a white chocolate chip, or even the ones of raspberries, quite nice. But you know, if I'm picking, yeah. it's the double choc. You know, the, the proper brown <laughs> cookies. <laughs> don't get rid of all that oat i'll have it if it's there you know if there's nothing else fine oh, i'm not man. happy about it <laughs> i used to live uh i used to when i was little i used to live near a sainsbury's this is complete anecdote time uh yeah. and just just we'd go me and my brother would walk down to sainsbury's and pick up the most disgustingly chocolatey cookies that they possibly sold with Those all the, the right money ones. we've been given to get regular yeah. shopping you know but they used to do like custard donuts as well or donuts with like pink creamy jammy <laughs> stuff in the middle of them oh man those are the days or just chocolate inside custard inside yeah. oh man what a what a life that was before you had to worry about your metabolism <laughs> we're turning into a food podcast like uh sam and randy's one they just talk about food now everyone may everyone <laughs> just descends into food eventually it's like should we talk about it's something interesting no backful. no <laughs> I shouldn't joke. I like their podcast, but yeah, it is. Oh man, we we just talk about food all the time. Oh, it's too hungry, <laughs> too hungry, too delicious. Um, we should. Yeah, okay. Let's let's get vaguely back on track to some of the stuff right, we we're going to talk about. Because um, you picked up your new Xbox, didn't you? Yeah, um, yeah, man. I've, I've got a fair amount to say about it, but I won't. Uh, oh no, man! Uh, buckle up! Buckle up! <laughs> Strap let's in. Here it. we go. Right. First thing. Xboxes, the new Xboxes naming scheme is stupid. Mm -hmm. I've always thought it is, and it has been. Basically, I basically there is the Xbox One, which came out in 2013. You know, the standard upgrade over the Xbox 360. Everyone understood it. That's the Xbox One. Cool. Yeah. Then they brought out the Xbox One X, which is like a you know a PS4 Pro version of the Xbox One, like a you know 4K big juggernaut that pushes out 4k graphics and it looks delicious then the new generation is the xbox series x which is like the new yeah, it's already confusing which is the new big boy the big chungus or whatever from <laughs> from xbox <laughs> which uh you know 4k 60p you know proper new gaming thing alongside it they also brought out the xbox series s which is a cheaper version of that. It's basically the same console, doesn't have a disk drive, looks much nicer in terms of its physical appearance and targets 1440p over 4K, but keeps the yeah. frame rate the same. Um, that is technically less powerful than the Xbox One X from their last generation in terms of graphical push, but it has a better, much better processor, so the frame rates are much higher. 
<laughs> so you, you get a bit of a trade-off there. So that that's why it's so annoying to explain. But basically, sure. I bought the Xbox Series S, the new Series S. So you could say it's technically a less powerful version of the Xbox I got. I already have because I had the Xbox One X. Yeah, so yeah. Now, we, now we've got that out the way. This is getting very, very yeah, weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Now we've got that out the way. Um, I've effectively yeah, take, gone down from 4K to have a push in frames per second. Um, sure, yeah. And yeah. I would say... As someone that owns the Xbox One X, I'd say it's completely worth it. Ten, so, I would not go back to the Xbox One X now. Not, in a million not to jump years. in here, but but if someone's less au fait with with buying a console, but they were thinking of picking up a console, I mean, just in terms of frame rate, that so what? How? Why would you prioritize frame rate over resolution? It just gives you a much smoother experience. It's like. Um, I guess how do you? The thing is with frame rate, it's hard to explain unless you like put someone in front of it and say test this out compared to that and then yeah. Like, oh yeah it feels much nicer to play but it basically just means more the higher the frame rate the better the game is in terms of smoothness and responsiveness and yeah it, it's, it's almost like i suppose it, it almost would descend into lag eventually it's, yeah, it's kind of it's on the same scale as lag i guess massively so like yeah. if or, i guess a way to explain it to other people out there would be like it's like a buffering youtube video imagine you're just keeping up with it uh, and it's buffering every now and then these these new xboxes are way ahead so it's yeah. never going to buffer. It's just there. But the biggest upgrade for me has been they've got um, SSDs in them now. So they're yeah. like crazy quick. Basically, the um, the Xbox, you can switch it on and get into a game within 10 seconds. Oof. It's it's incredible. Because like most Xboxes or any console, you, you start it up, you know, it does the big loading. Hello, welcome to the dashboard. And then you click sure, into a yeah. game and it loads up. It takes probably about anywhere between two or two to three minutes to get into a game. But these ones are incredible. They they have like a sleep. They call it a quick resume. Okay, yeah. So any any game that's been updated for the new Xboxes can jump into a game that quickly, and also jump between games. I think you can have up to like three or four in quick resume. Yeah. So say if you're like, oh well, I'm just going to quickly jump into uh, Call of Duty while I, I wait for everyone to show <laughs> up on this other game. You can switch to it takes about five seconds to load that game you can play a couple rounds of that and then switch back to your other game it's like they're both open at the same time and it's just it just runs perfectly but yeah it's been absolutely incredible and i was honestly surprised at how good it's been it's been awesome it's been so worth the upgrade and for two because the series s is cheaper it's only 250 quid yeah for a brand new xbox um it's incredible and not not that i'm trying to be like hashtag sponsored by xbox but i've got game sure. pass as well <laughs> and um it, it's it's such a hard deal to not get behind it's so worth it because you, yeah. you have to pay for online anyway with a playstation or an xbox i don't know it's like eight pound a month but for 10.99 a month you get game pass ultimate where you get all of microsoft's first party titles for free you get bethesda's now just been brought into i the, was i was about to mention that yeah yeah <laughs> so you get all the fallouts all the you know all the big rpgs that you like all, and there's, all, dude, there's all of, so all of doom yeah yeah all of doom so i'm, I'm so... waggling my eyebrows you're never going to get that on podcast <laughs> barely get it on video cam yeah there's sorry. so many games on game pass which i've never really tried out as well like there's loads of like little indie ones which you you know hear about so there's like undertale on there and dead servers on there and loads and loads of ones but the one one that i've been playing a lot recently which i'd never thought i'd ever play was a uh, forza horizon 4 which is oh. just like a racing game. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Like, I don't like racing games. I, I like Mario Kart, and that's pretty much it. Sure, but I've always written them off like, no, they're not for me. But Forza Horizon Four is bloody incredible. It's really? so much fun. Like it's it's almost like a celebration of everything racing because you you know it's really fun challenges. We have to race a. Tra- it's like Top Gear. You have to race a train, or you have to race oh, a hovercraft, cool. and you have to go down the side of a, <clears throat> like of a massive mountain before the. And it's set in England as well. So it's like oh, okay. really like cool. British. It's really nice. So like all the signs you recognise and like it's set near Edinburgh. So there's the the Harry Potter train is there. You no know, way. It's, it's yeah, really okay. cool. It's just a really nice game. But that's on you know that would normally cost like fifty five quid. But on Game Pass, yeah. it's you know ten ninety nine plus all these other games. So despite having an Xbox for a long time, I've actually jumped into the next you know next gen as such and absolutely loving it i think it's so worth it yeah really really enjoyed it enjoying it to the point where i was debating making some video content around it but um i'm not sure (laughs) no fair enough i mean so so do you think this is i mean i know you're saying you you're happy with your purchase but Mm -hmm. is the would you say this is the better xbox 
I don't know. I haven't tested the other one, so I really couldn't mm. say. I guess the problem is, like, if you want the 4K, you've only got one option, and that's the big Xbox. Yeah. I yeah. also want to say to all of this, I've been trying to buy a PS5 for, like, the past two months. <laughs> oh, wow, really? And I, you just can't get them. <clears throat> And I almost bought this Xbox because I just wanted, you know, I was in the mood. I wanted a new console and that was the only one I could get. Sure. And I knew my friend Sam and actually Sam and Randy have both got the Series S Xbox. And I've seen like Sam play and it looks great. So I was like, do you know what? Actually, when I have an Xbox, it's for playing like multiplayer games with my friends usually more than anything. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll get the slightly cheaper version of that because when you play, when you play like a shooter online or something with your mates, it's not... It doesn't feel ever so important to have like the best absolute 4K graphics. But when yeah. I'm playing the next God of War on PS5, I want that to look incredible. Yeah, so sure. I'll buy a full blown PS5 for that. But um, yeah, you just can't buy a PS5 at the moment. It's it's a nightmare. I've Can you really pull tried your, hard. Just pull your sponsorship strings, mate. Uh, if, <laughs> if only I could. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, a, it's been a nightmare to get a hold of. It really has. But um, yeah, I would say if anyone's on the fence about picking up one of those new Xboxes, uh, series s then then don't be i i absolutely loving it it's fantastic hey great yeah really really great stuff I mean, you see little snippets of bite review knowledge just bleeding yeah, through just yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is the thing i like about microsoft what they've done this time around is like they know they don't have the games so sure. they've just made they've made the consoles really like easy to buy and easy to get behind because like yeah most most of the time you have to buy when you have to do it on it's called xbox all access so yep. you pay i think you pay 20 pound a month for a series s and game pass so and then you get the consoles so there's no upfront payment it's just 20 pound a month just like a subscription and you yeah. can do the same with the big the big one i think it's like 30 pound a month and you get you know all, over 100 games straight away through game pass and the new xbox for 30 pound a month oh, man. you know it's cheaper than sky yeah yeah which is which is crazy when you think about it i haven't done it that way but i know a few people have and like you know what's what's 20 pounds if you're paying 10.99 a month anyway for game pass what's 20 pounds to get the console with it so i think they've done a good job of like making it making the console something worth buying because they just don't really have the game support at the moment in terms of first party stuff there's still loads of games on there well it seems like you know it's much always much better to play to your strengths isn't it you know if you say i'm i we're good at this you know, and for whatever reason, we'd like to be good at something else, but we're not right yeah, now. So definitely, I'll get on. But, yeah, great. But mate, the other thing to think about as well: now that they bought Bethesda, that means the next Skyrim, Skyrim, whatever comes oh, after yeah. that, will be oh, Xbox man. Day nah, One. Nah, nah, bollocks to Skyrim, mate. The, the last, <laughs> the last expansion for Doom Eternal dropped recently. Oh yeah, uh, Ancient Gods Part Two is what Part it is. Two. I am so excited. I know I'm not going to get back down this rabbit hole of my appreciation for Doom Eternal. <laughs> but get but yeah, me there. I'm I'm very happy about it. I didn't realize that I'd already bought it, which is quite oh, really? nice. Yeah, nice. it just downloaded. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, nice. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thanks very much. But, but no, yeah, I, I think um, and I think Brandy, bless him, who's been a, a PS diehard for many years, has actually really really enjoyed his Xbox. Oh, okay, which is oh. uh, cool to know. Hey, I do. Yeah. I mean, go. talking of of, uh, of great big, you know, spectacles and kind of just diving into uh, to the action. I want to talk to you about what I watched last night. I want to hear all up. about it because uh, I watched Godzilla versus Kong. And the it ultimate is, throwdown. It's fantastic, <laughs> and I don't care. I don't care what anyone thinks. You know, you know, you're supposed to have kind of like high flutin ideas about. Oh, this is good high quality cinema. This is a great movie it really really is um <laughs> Man, i want to see it so bad but well, feel I'd... free to spoil it i think because like what seriously what is there to spoil okay so there isn't oh right i'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do a little bit i'll, I'll tell you a bit and I'll, I'll warn you if anyone wants to watch this and really feels like they they don't want to have it spoiled for them then i will tell you sure. if I'm gonna spoil anything. Like but in terms of uh for one i know this is like a very cold take with this kind of movie but it knows exactly what movie it is it's not you know, trying to be anything else it's not trying to be anything else it is about wanting to see two great big creatures just lump each other Face for a off. bit yeah. you know <laughs> and also there's a bit of destruction of human stuff you know okay so the whole film isn't one long fight between the two of them no uh it's more like you know you get a few set pieces where they'll they'll fight you know a few different rounds of the of the battle if you like yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of how in terms of what that looks like it looks incredible 
uh, yeah, good. there are there are certain effects that now I, I know mate you can blame corridor cruise youtube channel for this but you know you start to have a bit more of an eye to visual effects yeah yeah uh, and it looked i mean it looked tight to me i'm not an expert by any means but there were lots of nice little touches especially with uh say with, with kong's fur you know it where he's because he's so big the the physics of of him have scaled up quite nicely because he's bigger yeah. in this than he ever was in Skull Island. You know, he I think they say sure. that that he's not fully grown. He's fully grown now. You know, you can yeah, see yeah. he looks more mature and a bit of grey in the old monkey beard. You know, which, yeah. which, which <laughs> Mate, I if appreciate. He can, if he can fight against Godzilla, he's got to be big. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, but like yeah. it's like when he moves too quick when he's wet, and he almost leaves behind a Kong shaped cloud of water. Yeah. So oh, stuff cool. like that, where the physics of it really works how it would, you know, how, how it yeah. would in, in, in real life. Uh, yeah, man. So the, the stylistic choice for a lot of it is very nice. Like the different fights feel very distinct from each other. Uh, cool. There's, again, again, this won't be a spoiler, but they, but they have a bit of a ruckus on a boat. This is in a trailer uh, yeah. where they're fighting in, in the water and they're fighting on, <laughs> on a couple of like uh, transport ships. But then that feels very different to when they're having a bit of a Barney uh, in Hong Kong later in the movie. Sure. Where it's very neon. It's, it's almost more of a callback to older Godzilla movies, you know, but, but updated. You know, it's difficult to yeah. describe. But Man, it, old Godzilla films, he only wants to destroy Asian, Asian countries. He's not interested in America. Doesn't care, mate. He's yeah, there to wreck Tokyo. <laughs> He's there to wreck Hong Kong. But dude, just the just the the vibrance of it, you know, especially because this is near the end of the film when everything is they've they've tried to turn up to twelve, you know, they're topping out at eleven yeah. and they're trying to, and just the the neon everywhere and the way that things get destroyed and demolished, like the, just the visuals of this movie are amazing. The, That's awesome. I mean, I know people have. I, I've not been getting into this. I know people have been getting into like, are you Team Godzilla or Team Kong? You know, camps. <laughs> I, I might be controversial here. I, I appreciate King Kong. Yeah. Because... I kind of assumed Kong would be, uh, you know, I don't want to ruin it for myself, but I kind of assumed if there is a good guy, I would imagine Kong is the... Kong is definitely he? feels more like the protagonist sure. against Godzilla in this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, may, unless you're like a diehard Godzilla fan and you want to see Godzilla wreck shop, fine, fine. Yeah. But in terms of the way the movie's set up, it's definitely set up as Kong is your man, you know, sure. and, and he's got a save the humans from godzilla you know <laughs> but dude but it's it's i think because it was like in all in all the recent king kong movies that we've had you know yeah. even down to peter jackson's king uh kong movie yeah, yeah you feel like he is uh how can i put it like he's an early human fighting sure. dinosaurs you know and i know that i know that's ridiculous yeah, but yeah it's that caveman sort of feel. yeah it's like i you, you maybe feel a bit more of a connection with him you know where he's trying he's having to use tools you know to to yeah, get the yeah. upper hand on 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 these various opponents so yeah man i i can i can empathize with Kong a, a fair bit you know yeah and and, hmm. and that comes across really well like he's just human enough without it yeah. being comical you know he's not like jim face at the camera you know there's nothing like that you know he's kind of yeah yeah yeah, he, he's got the right reactions without it being too over the top. Uh, I mean, some of it is ridiculous, you know. Yeah, inevitably, as you'd some of the some of the decisions. Uh, when we were watching it, we kind of were saying to each other, "Well, why didn't he do that in the first? Well, not not necessarily decisions <laughs> that Kong or Godzilla make, but yeah. decisions that the humans make. You think, well, why not do that in the first place? Or why did you yeah, not do that yesterday? Or or what have you? So there are a few moments like that, but it doesn't doesn't spoil it. Um, I guess I kind of want, I do want to talk spoilers. So I, I'll just wrap up saying if anyone's going to watch this Scoot and doesn't along. want to have anything spoiled. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll put some time codes for where the spoilers start in the, uh, in the description or uh, yeah, when it's safe back to listen again. But yeah. if you're, if you're considering whether it's worth the, I think 1599, I think it was Yeah. Uh, on prime, I think you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, it, yes, I'd just say it is just worth it. If if you at all thought that you might watch this in the cinema, then it's worth paying for the home premiere. Awesome. Uh, just w- if you're thinking you're vaguely interested and you fancy something cool to watch, yes, I, yeah. I would recommend it. It's very cool. But so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a few spoilers. But again, there's Let's not there's not really anything that you that you can spoil in this. Yeah. Uh, in terms of enjoyment, but the old the old trope of they punch for a bit and then they're mates. Is yeah. out is out in full force in this movie. Oh really? Um, so yeah. So so but but that it works in a way because I is that is that King Kong coming 
to your that, house. That's someone using a strimmer outside. Oh, it's fine, but you can't even hear it. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll deal with that in the edit. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they only because, and I want to talk to you about this because it's so cool, but it was it was kind of predicted on a couple of people who sort of went oh you know maybe this sure. explains what's going on because the big the big thing that you that that can't be explained in the film is how godzilla goes from being uh humanity's friend in yeah. the in the previous godzilla movie to now yeah, he wrecking beat shop up at, yeah because he beat up somebody didn't he in the first was it's part of three films uh well dude he he, he was king of the monsters in the last one because he beat uh king Ghidorah the three headed right. you know he he took out you know and and all sorts and all sorts of other monsters as well <laughs> took he, out like there's there's some sort of hierarchy to uh well yeah no exactly well, you've yeah. got to beat this guy if you want to be number one <laughs> yeah yeah i mean but but in this so in this one they're kind of saying well why why is he attacking humanity again and that's why they want kong to come along and try and take him out you know it's like right so i know yeah. it sounds so ridiculous to no, about this. no but but the so, and they do they have a bit of a barney and you know and it's uh, you know godzilla knack is kong a bit and you know and it's fine and pre- to be honest throughout the film there are minor wins and minor losses you know and there's like sure. moments of victory moments of defeat but they are pretty evenly matched you know yeah. it's not like you get a definitive w- it's more like at the end uh, yeah even, even with the last victor between the two of them it kind of still feels like he had a victory on the day you know sure, right. it, never, it, it never yeah it never feels like i am the best you know? yeah fine. but but so they but what comes out over the course of the movie is that they've humanity has built mecha godzilla <laughs> as like who's <laughs> as a classic character yeah do classic yeah, yeah. character from the old movies but and this was what kind of people were suspecting they're like i wonder if that's why godzilla's angry is because he suspe- right. he knows he knows this is what's happening you know uh so yeah and, and of course it's humans who haven't got the best interests at heart you know they they just want to they want to destroy godzilla so they become the the alpha again you know so humans are back yeah. on top so that's why godzilla's pissed and he's and he's kind of you know destroying bases and stuff so the end the payoff at the end when they're fighting mecha godzilla together I was going to say, it feels dude, like they buddy team up, sort mate, of like, right? It's, dude, it just, it's, it makes the whole thing worth it. And like I say, man, none of this spoils the enjoyment of the movie. I, I really no. hope you don't feel that this spoils it when you, mate, when you I was watch gonna, it. I was going to predict, because I haven't seen anything about it, I was going to predict that a bigger threat appears and they yep. have to buddy up, exactly. put the differences aside to, to fight the bigger threat. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's quite a cool, I mean... Uh, this I won't spoil this for you, but there is also obviously there are subplots going on at the same time. You know, people yeah. are trying to save certain things or trying to stop certain things from happening. There's there's, there's some pretty neat, you know, f- admittedly forgettable <laughs> subplots. But the plot of what happens to King Kong and what where they go after the kind of first encounter with Godzilla yeah. uh, is very unexpected because it's not in any of the trailers. It's but they or oh, they almost dive into a different bit of classical literature there's like there's like woven in some interesting some very interesting other plots into this film which i wasn't expecting at all i don't i don't know if it was ever mentioned pre-release but that's it i I was i hoped it would be relevant to the film and it was it it you know it managed to basically pad out a film about two creatures fighting each other so it's not (laughs) so it's not all about them (laughs) taking lumps out of each other uh yeah, dude, what can I say? I really enjoyed it. The ending was good. I felt like the ending was cool. Uh, if you're a fan of King Kong, if you're a fan of Godzilla, you'll you'll appreciate the characters, uh, not even arcs, but their their progress through the film. I think, sure. you'll, you know, there's something for everyone in there. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'd I'm, like you to know, see even, it. Even just remembering it. it, I'm getting more excited about it again because it was <laughs> it was very good. It was very I decent. I might see if Kelly Fancy's watching it tonight because I'll, I'll get it on um, Prime or something. Mate, you know, Claire has got a weird. I would never have expected this, but she's got a weird soft spot for big monster movies. Because I think we talked we talked about Rampage on the podcast at one point. Yeah, we did. We, we, she loved the Meg, dude. Uh, we've tapped, we've <laughs> Get tapped him into on. this. Yeah, we've tapped into this weird seam of films that Claire's just really <laughs> inexplicably into. Yeah, do you know so, what yeah. Transformers, Claire? No. Look how big he is. Oh god, yes. Get it on. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> he's as tall as a skyscraper. Get it right. <laughs> Pacific Rim. Get it on. <laughs> Yeah, so dude, I, yeah, I mean, I see what you think, see what you think, and uh, and let me know, I guess, and and no, listeners, listeners, you too, 
let's hear what you think about it because Definitely. i was super into it <laughs> that is ben's wreck that's ben, the yeah, real ben's, ben's wreck. wreck yeah the ben's that's wreck awesome. was the friendship we found along the oh. way <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, man i'm gonna push for it tonight i want to watch it oh do 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 but mate i think that's that pretty much wraps up the show to be honest yeah there you go ah oh, man we very both good. survived i've had a bit of a sore throat i'm not gonna go into it but you know i feel, <laughs> I feel like i've done very well thanks that's your uh, rona mate yeah oh, don't don't um if you got this far then by all means and please leave a comment leave a like leave a review um all of that actually mm-hmm. really helps i know i know i keep waffling on about how we, we are you know picking up more listeners you know it's, it's which is which is always nice uh, i still can't explain it but it is very nice um, but yeah, if you if you leave any kind of interaction just for the algorithms, hey, it helps. So it helps. please do. Lovely and stuff. We'd be very grateful. Um, Tom, where can people find you online if they want to say hello? It's uh, at Bite Review everywhere. But where can they find Ben? Uh, probably easiest through the website benjuanlung dot com. And if you want to send us a message, you can. You can. I, I, I mention this every time. I'm really not pushing it. It's but. <laughs> at gmail.com is a web is a, an email address you can use if you want to send us stuff you yeah. think we find interesting that you want to hear two people who are completely unknowledgeable and inexperienced about it talk about let's it how, let's hear it you know how it works uh, <laughs> but, for the, but for the time being uh yeah thanks for listening we'll see you next time see you next time bye bye let me say easy that as now. that <laughs>